my name is Dan Nicholson and my uh, company here is Nicholson Logging and Lumber. Okay. And uh, we're in a sawmill in downtown Yorkville. Been here for actually 23 years wow. from this September. Uh, I started it once upon a time in 1986. Been here ever since. We've harvested uh, always local timber from the area and then turn around and process it back into lumber. It goes all different directions from rough green low grade material like you'd use for blocking and trailer decks on low right. boys for equipment right. things like that ag lumber say for horse fences and horse stalls things like that but then all the way to the other extreme of the range custom made flooring and trim moldings things like that uh, kiln dry lumber for woodworkers so we do kind of a broad variety of different items out of here over time people bring logs in for us mm -hmm. we process their logs back through for them into whatever. In fact, uh, this stuff here we're getting ready to work with. Uh, that's why we're working on the one machine there in the background. This is some white oak lumber that came out of the city of Bolingbrook. They're going to be, well, they are building a new nature center. We came in and we harvested all the trees off of their job site. Yeah. All the posts, all the columns that you see in that building are all literally the trees that came off of that job site. We took, peeled them down, sanded them down, oh, treated neat. them and oiled them. So when you go to that building, all those posts, that was all our work. But the trees came off of that site. And this is part of a, a bigger oak tree that got cut out of there. And again, same thing, we milled it down and sent it out and had it cone dry. And this will wind up the uh, stair treads in that same building. Oh, that's nice. So you came from so, the actual source and yep. it's gonna go back to the original it goes source. goes right back to the original right back to the original story. So that's a pretty neat uh, concept, gives a neat story to things. It's a 1916 Baxter Whitney 30 inch planer. It was called a uh, P4. It was originally uh, sent to Slay Furniture up in Grand Rapids, Michigan was its history. And uh, the dealer was in Chicago and uh, went up to Slay Furniture and then about uh, 100 years ago, here, here it is, back in the Chicago area. How thick can this thing uh, work? Uh, up a to one six and a half inch. inch? Six inch, up wow. Up to six inch, six by 30. So you can plane down a six inch thick mm -hmm. section of wood? Yep. Oh, yep. that's impressive. Huh. The, uh, the, neat, uh, the neat part of it is, I say, the old uh, Babbitt in it. I, the Babbitt had worn out. It's just a friction type bearing and it's two pieces. This piece comes separate out of the center here and by tightening down the bolts you put a little down force on the shaft. That's how you keep the clearances in it. But at any rate, it, uh, it is, I talked to an old guy in the process of trying to learn something about it. I talked to an old guy out in Pennsylvania, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the place. Uh, cap alloy and metals out there and the old guy that was there I believe his name was Walter I called up because I'm trying to find people that actually made Babbitt figuring somebody's got to know something right. other than well this is what they use why do they use it I don't know it's what we sell oh well, okay that makes sense so at any rate I get on the phone and start asking this gal on the phone some more technical questions and she's like oh you need to talk to Walter Walter yeah don't worry I'll put you through to him well I get this old guy on the phone named Walter and he, you know, start asking him different things and yeah. he's like, he goes, you know kid, ain't nobody called and asked me any questions like this in the last 50 years. Right. I've been waiting for somebody like you to come along. <laughs> and uh, he's been he storing said, all that knowledge all yep, that time, right? Yep. And uh, he's, he had been there for like almost 60 years or something like that. He was yeah. in his late 70s, early 80s. And uh, so he went through. And he said, you know, you got about two, three hours on to spend? I said, sure. And we spent about two, three hours on the phone with him just telling me, you know, when they add this, it changes it like this. When they add that, it changes it like that. So all the various compositions, why they use them, why they don't use them, what works well in what operations, and when you change different alloying amounts. And uh, so I got a real education on that some of it you know some of the rudimentary stuff i'd gotten from some local old timers but to get the real technical stuff uh that all came from walter way back so when we align it we align it with a uh 
piece of piano wire and uh, we're within easily a 30 second more like a 64th from being straight over 16 feet so yeah. it produces better results than about any machine I can buy brand new so it's kind of a so it's my own invention years ago that we came up with and it works out quite quite nicely what is the size of that blade on there? Wow. It was actually an old Tanowitz table saw originally. That's that paste you're looking at. Wow. 16 inch Tanowitz table saw. Uh, it's either five or seven and a half horse motor. Very rarely do they use it and run out of <laughs> run out of motor. It usually has plenty of it. It's worked. Put a lot of lumber to it. <laughs>